My notes in front of me say this is take two. It's not. I managed to bugger up the second recording too. So, it's been a busy few weeks since I last did a video, um, hence busy look at the desk. Not just printer related, other project related, there's other PCBs back here. Old graphics card where I've buggered around with computers, all sorts. But last time around, I think we just finished the mains wiring, all the below bed stuff. So the stuff that, in my opinion, is not the best documented, but is not insurmountable. This time around, it's going to be all the, the low voltage wiring, as it were. I'm not going to go into anywhere near as much detail, because I think the documentation is much better. Not only the Voron documentation, but also the documentation on your um, controller's site. So be it Fizetech, be it Big Tree Tech, both of those have GitHubs. They both have you know extensive documentation, pinouts, this, that, and the other. There's kind of configurations knocking around for your clipper, that sort of thing. I'll quickly go over here how I approached it because I had a couple of extra things within my uh, build that are kind of not standard, but it's not rocket science. So we started off quite well. We have our background here, a nice clean, clean thing. So like I was saying on the last video, here are the Wago blocks with the ground 5 volt in the middle and 12 volt there, uh, sorry, 24 volt there. So the ground will come out, go everywhere, etc. Your 5 volt will kind of come out of there and kind of go along and into this uh, to drive the LEDs and the 24 volt will do the same and come over for the LEDs. I think I've got those two the wrong way around, but you get the idea. We've got the Pi here. So what I'll also do is from a 5 volt line, because I've got one, is come up and power my Pi, do that directly from the pins, same for the ground as it were. Some people will tell you you're not going to get the protection there that you would if you went via USB, but on the Pi 4, it makes no difference. You haven't got the protection there either way from what I understand, so you're quite possibly going to knacker it if you do it wrong, so double check it. Obviously, your stepper motors, well, this stepper comes in there, and all of your wires from the back of the tool head, which is this up here, will come through your tool chains, and it all comes through this tiny little notch that was in the back of your uh, enclosure to be fair it was a bit of a tight squeeze but all comes in there you know comes down comes through to wherever it has to go for your stepper motors there and for your hot ends etc these are your inputs down here so yeah you just come out of those straight into there jobs are good and fans blah 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 all nice and all good unfortunately i don't have a picture of it when i nicely did it because I started to, uh, well, I just got it wired and then I rewired it straight away. Let me share with you why. So, did all that, all was good, except for the JST connectors. You know this little piece down here? I said, they'll all fit in that, the JSTs will go in there fine. They will do when you're stacking them up on a bench. They won't do when they're in the printer with bits of wiring and bits of this and bits of that that, you know, restrict the angles. And there was always one, usually two, sticking out of this somehow. So, you know, live and learn. Apart from the fact I was virtually good to go, I hadn't turned it on or anything yet, when my next Amazon delivery came, which is this stuff. This kind of cable sleeving, you know, that frays like hell at the end, but you put a little heat shrink on him. It's all fine. but. If any of you have got a Creality printer, you'll know this stuff. It kind of expands, all your wires go through the middle. I thought, I'm going to do this once. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to get all my wiring inside this black sleeving. It's going to look the bomb. All well and good. So, put all my little wires through. Of course, they were crimped up by this point, because I, although I'd not turned it on, I had had it all connected up. The crimps were getting a bit stuck here and there, so, you know, you give it a little bit of a and a bit of a, come on, you bugger. And you swear at it a few times. Eventually it'll happen. Plugs it all in, did all the pre-flight checks. You know, had to change a couple of wires around here and there where I got the wrong thing to the wrong thing, despite me saying how easy it is and 
how well written down it is. I can only blame Operator Arrow there. But yeah, it all worked. I even took a video and got my serial number. And for those of you that don't know what a serial number is, it's a Voron thing. Basically, you get allocated the next number in the list. You have to upload a video to Reddit. You have to prove that your electronics are safe. So you got your deck plate in. Your wiring's, you know, reasonable, not spaghetti junction-y. And it's printing. And this is what that looks like. At the end, the bench looked like this. But I didn't care. Within like a less than a day, I think, I had my serial number. This is Voron 1, serial number 224. So not that many of them, you know. Which makes it better than the V2s, but don't tell the V2 crowd. But yeah, life was good. Until the next day, when I was you know, running a few test prints, a few calibrations, and and this happened. Yeah, it was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen in a 3D printer. It would print the front half of the bed. It would not print the back half of the bed. And I narrowed it down to the fact that it depended on the angle of the kink in the drag chain. Because after one day of having a serial number, I had my first wire break. Oh, oh god, talk about unlucky. People will tell you you've got hundreds, thousands of hours before you get a wire break in silicon wire. Yeah, no, not for me. Not for me. One day. Just the one. But you know, hey ho. So took it out, replaced it all through, you know, didn't bother putting it through the sleeving, just clicked open my drag chains. Never buy a drag chain that doesn't open. Oh, you will curse yourself forever in a day if you do. Built it all back, hooked it all up, came back to the computer and was bugging around with stuff, you know, turn it on and this, that and the other. Merrily going on my way, I thought, is my wife burning something downstairs? That doesn't smell good, there's something not right. She wasn't burning anything, I was. I was cooking my printer. So, instead of this connector here being connected to the proper hot end and the Mr. Plugs on the 4-pin JST, they were connected to the fan plugs on the 4-pin JST. I told you those JSTs were going to cause me issues, didn't I? So yeah, this was basically being pumped 24 volts and getting hotter and hotter and hotter until he started to smoke. It absolutely reeked in here. I had to open all the windows up after I turned the damn thing off, luckily before anything actually caught fire. This is now no longer two pieces, it's one solid fused piece. Because it got so hot that I can take all the screws out of this and I can't get it apart. The heat break inside, I managed to have the mother all clogs in. As I tried to unclog it, I bent it. So I've had to order a spare from Triangle Labs, which I fitted in there. So thankfully they're still selling the spares even though they can't sell the whole kit. Maybe get yourself some spares. But yeah, all was good. Apart from the semester looked a bit, a bit like this, basically, charred. But, you know, it could have been worse. Started doing stuff again and all of a sudden, panic, board shut down. Fans ramped up to full. What's going on here then? Yeah, hot end was minus 50 degrees Celsius. For people in America who work in Fahrenheit, that's absolutely chuffing freezing. 
well, less than freezing to be technical. But yeah, you know how I told you that this wonderful stuff that I'd kind of shoved the wires through and I'd bug it around with it and that sort of thing? Yeah, that was not the best, best plan at all. And long story short, I replaced that wire. Third day, two more wire breaks. I'd had four wire breaks in three days. At this point, I did not trust any of my wiring at all. A whole lot came out, went in the bin. Thank goodness for those opening cable chains, you know. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Buy opening cable chains. That's your takeaway from this. It's been worth you watching. They stay till the end, you know. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. So yeah, rewired it all again. And, you know, life's been good. I've still got some tuning to do. There's a brilliant tuning guide uh, which I'll link in the description which is basically kind of come about from one of the guys in discord so it's all worked since then I've put a spider in I've also put in a tool head PCB which is one of these little things to make your plugging a lot easier there's a version doing the rounds by a guy called Hart K which mine is basically based on his but I wanted to redesign it a bit I wanted to put some different plugs on and I wanted the tracers to be thicker for the hot end just so that there's a little bit more ability for it to carry some current in there third re rewiring I think I'll call it got some Igus chains coming next week that'll be fourth rewiring and a printer that's barely two months old but you know hey ho it's been a worthwhile project I've absolutely loved it I've learned a lot about how my printer works which I think is almost quite invaluable so when I've got a slight problem now instead of going I don't know Google well I put it together I can kind of diagnose what does what and why it does what learnings from the whole experience you know check double check triple check your bill of material your sourcing guide when you're doing your sourcing you can buy a kit with all the bits in but personally I still prefer you know self-sourcing Build it slow, take your time, enjoy the process. I got like an excited kid at Christmas morning, opening all the presents and then going, oh, oh, it's done. Hey, I wish it, in hindsight, I wish I'd maybe gone a little slower. And I might do that for the next one, because trust me, these Vorons, they breed. We'll get on to that. Third one, ask questions. You know, personally, I'm a big fan of the Discord server. Facebook, eh, less, less so much. But yeah, Discord's full of people, really helpful. No question is a stupid question. Only stupid question is when you don't ask, make an assumption, get it wrong, and have to spend time trying to unpick what you've done to fix it later. And watch people, knowledgeable people like Nero, um, on YouTube. His videos are excellent, and he's actually almost, I think, done with his V1.8 build. And the final point I'd say is if you're starting out, Build a stock printer. Things like this, this is not stock. If you build a stock printer and you've got issues, it's much easier to fix, it's much easier to diagnose for people. If you've put all these random mods on, you know, you need a working baseline to start with. But yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. I absolutely love my printer. And uh, yeah, I think my next project may be a, a cute little baby V0 cutest printer you'll ever see but yeah it's been great thank you for joining me on my journey um i've got a follow-on video i think i'll do some mods and bits and pieces but you know here's a little bit of the finished product as it were